Welcome, runners, to the Great American 5000 Recap Show, presented by Buddy. I'm your host, Casey Baum. This event is going to be awesome. It's put on by the sports backers. It goes from San Francisco all the way to New York City, 3,107 miles, all run virtually because of... COVID-19. I've done marathons and ultra marathons in the past. I ran the Leadville 100 in 29 and a half hours. It was insane. I've never done a virtual event before, so I'm so excited to be part of Team Big Apple or Bust, I believe is the name of it. It's going to be awesome. I know you all are going to have a great time with the event as well. Each week, we're going to feature different guests, different people to come on and talk about their team, what they know about running. There's gonna be a lot of great insight coming your way. My first guest this week, is John Lugbill, the executive director of Sportsbackers. Check it out and have a great time. Welcome, John. Yeah, thanks, Casey. Great to be here. Appreciate you, uh, you joining us. Uh, do you mind uh, introducing yourself and uh, talking a little bit about the, uh, the Sportsbackers? Yeah, John Lugbill, I'm the executive director of the Sportsbackers and I've been with the organization for 27 years, and we inspire people throughout the Richmond region to live an uh, active lifestyle, and we do that uh, throughout our community, uh, no matter the income, race, uh, anything. So, so we're out there reaching throughout our community to inspire active living. Do you mind uh, sharing a little bit on the inspiration behind the Great American 5000? Yeah, the Great American 5000 uh, really came out of two thoughts in our heads. One was uh, Brantley Tyndall on our staff rode across America last we summer on his bike yeah. and, yeah. and uh, we watched the little blue dots and it was just fascinating. And it was just really neat. So first of all, we had that experience and a couple uh, teams from here every year go down to the Blue Ridge Relay and we compete against each other. So I've been part of that buttermilk toast team uh, for the past seven years. And we started talking about what would it be like if we did kind of loaded up the Winnebago and had like 10 or 15 of us run across the country. So it was something to do in between the runs at the Blue Ridge Relay. It wasn't something I'm not sure that any of us were seriously going to do, but it was really fun talking about it. Like how would it work and where would we go and what route would we take? So then this year when we, the coronavirus came and it shut us down and, and we're a nonprofit organization, but we lost, you know, a million dollars really quickly at uh, the start of all this. And we were sitting down talking about, well, what would be fun to do? What, what can we do now that we don't normally ever get to do? And then all of a sudden that led to, well, wait, we could do a virtual run with teams across the country and it would be doable. And so, so that's where those ideas kind of came together. So it really was this combina it was this weird combination. And, and I think there is something about this moment in time that makes it particularly fun uh, people are craving to be part of a team and groups and this, this social isol isolation is getting old. Um, and so, and, and then something to motivate you. We don't have races like we normally do. And, and so this, this, this was a, a really neat way to combine those two things. Tell me a little bit about, you know, virtual events. I know we're sort of shifting a little bit uh, during this, uh, this COVID-19 crisis, but what are your thoughts on, on virtual events? And this is something you guys are going to continue to do. I mean, one thing with sports players, we really pride ourselves on our in-person events and what a great service we provide to everybody with all the amenities we offer and first rate. So, so going virtual seemed defensive almost to us. Like, no, like people should pay to have all this great stuff we do for them to have this great event experience. So, so at first maybe it was damaging to my ego or our, our egos, but but collectively, I think we've come around to understand that some people don't like big crowds. Some people, you know, like to run in the afternoon. Some people like to run in the evening. Um, often races are all in the mornings. You know, there's all sorts of weird reasons that, that races don't work for people. So having a virtual race, we can do it whenever you want. So we think virtual races are here to stay, but not for everybody. There's a niche. We did a Taco Trot 5K that was virtual uh, yep. for Cinco de Mayo, and we had 1,700 people sign up. 30% of the runners had never done one of our events before. So, wow. so we think there is a niche. And then this Great American 5000 is totally different. Uh, about half our participants are outside of the state of Virginia. I just looked. We had over 20 countries represented. Um, That's awesome. We have a team out of Nairobi. Uh, I mean, it's <laughs> just really cool. Um, we now are up to 48 states. I mean, pe people are, I mean, it, it obviously is resonating with people. 
That's so great. Well, thanks. Thanks for joining us. Any, uh, any final words of encouragement as the, uh, the teams and runners get set to, uh, to run across the country? Well, first of all, I think people are going to love the leaderboard and love the way we're doing the tracking across the country. I think that's going to be great. The other thing is, um, you know, the, the initial idea was to replicate what it'd be like being in the Winnebago and everybody take turns and run all day. Um, obviously, you can all run at the same time and all of that's been removed. But, but I think the idea that you actually kind of commit to doing things a little bit more, whether that's walking some extra miles, running a few extra miles, you know, for the elite teams, okay, they don't need this advice. But, but for everybody else, you know, go ahead and make it a little bit special. Like, like remind yourself about the, the summer that you uh, were part of a team that went across the United States, you know, that go ahead and make it be a little bit special, but go an extra mile or two each day, do a little something extra, go ahead and spend some more time with your, your teammates and, and encourage each other. Uh, to me, that's what, that's what'll make this special. The more, the more you make it something you'll remember, um, the better the experience will be. We're very excited to uh, to report on the uh, the results as well as uh, as the leaders move move around and move throughout the country. So, um, thanks so much, John. Thanks for your time and uh, all the best to you. And thanks for putting on such a great event. All right. Thanks, Casey. Great. Take care. All right. Thanks so much, John, and thank you all for tuning in this week. Be sure to click the subscribe button so you can get all of the updates on the Great American 5000. Also, drop us a comment. Let us know what you'd like to hear. I'm Casey Baum, and just remember, if you lose toenails, at least you still have fingernails. <laughs> it's sort of like I'm like waiting for the crowd to laugh, but it's not funny, and there is no crowd. <laughs>